Yes, sir. That's where I'm going, up there in the sky. I know it isn't always as beautiful as it is right now, or as safe and quiet. But just the same, that's all I've ever wanted to do. I was born to fly. Funny, even before one's ever been up, one knows a thing like that, and I know. I'm cut out to fly better and climb faster than anyone else, and to take off with the shortest run possible, to have plenty of nerve and skill. Say, if you're looking for me, I'm over here. No, no, further over this way. Right there, that's me. The first F6F ever made. And you can call me Hellcat for short. A lot of people are going to do that. I'm proud of that name. Because I come from quite a family of fighting cats. There's Chet and his crew coming for the final checkup. It's a little trying, all this waiting to be somebody. Because until it's been in the air for the first time, a plane's just thousands of pounds of dead weight. These guys are good at this. And so is everybody here. You can tell I'm from Grumman in a lot of ways. Here's one. Square wingtips, they've got definite advantages. The closer you come to stalling, the deader your wing gets. Starting on the inside and creeping out. So with the aileron reaching out almost to the end, it means your pilot has aileron control to the last second plus the advantage of the longer flaps. Lots of hard work and research prove the efficiency of this airfoil. And the skin is wrapped around you like this, thus saving a lot of building time. And this is one sure way to tell that a ship is from Grumman. Did you ever see a neater folding wing? undignified being treated like this, but if a guy should forget some of his tools, now's the time to find out. But say, what's that crowd over there for? It's him, Connie. And along with him comes the big moment. This is what I've been waiting for. That first big chance to do my stuff. No more time to be nervous now. Worried? <laughs> Not a bit. I'm darn sure. There are 40,000 reasons why I'm so sure. Those 40,000 parts that make me the Hellcat. Right from the first blueprint, right through engineering, production, assembly, right through all the thousands of operations that went into the job, all along the line, it was skill that made me. Skill. So no wonder I'm sure and proud, because I know that story. And who would know it better? It all began a while ago on an envelope. Roy Grumman, the boss himself, was at the controls. Back in the summer of 41, he and Jake Swerbel were putting their heads together. Jake had just returned from the Pacific, where he talked with pilots who were already in Grumman Wildcats. So right from the beginning, the engineers began to design a pilot ship. And Jake got the plant managers together. They came from plants two, three, four. He got them together to tell them about the new ship. A fast start was necessary, because there was plenty of competition to overcome. But one fine day, yours truly became three-dimensional for testing in the wind tunnel. One look. And you can see there wasn't much trouble there. Then the real work began. It was easy listening to the pilots who knew, but it was a tough job designing all their hopes and prayers into a ship. Here in engineering, they had plenty of voices in their ears, like that of Commander Butch O'Hare, who said, give us something that will go upstairs faster. So they designed a motor mount to harness 2,000 horsepower, enough to pull a half mile long freight train or words like, a ship that comes in slower. So your wing flaps were of a new design. Find one that will sit down anywhere. So a new wide tread husky landing gear was designed and tested. More ammunition and more firepower. So you've got hundreds of rounds of highly concentrated wallop 
packed into each wing. What we need is a ship that can take it, a ship that's built to fight and come back. So Roy, thinking about all these things one day, suddenly knew what to name you. The Hellcat, because that's what he wanted you to be. But a name is one thing, and being it is another. There were still plenty of things to be decided. Aerodynamics says this is the shape. Structure says here is the bracing. Ordnance says these are the guns. But you can't have that brace there. That's where the guns have to be. Then you can't have that shape because you can't brace it. You can have this, but you can't have that. You want the ship to fly, don't you? Out of a thousand do's and don'ts, out of juggling, out of heads and hands, out of experience and skill and painstaking detail, you became an airplane on paper. No admittance. They meant it too, and they still do. That place is a military secret. Few are allowed through that door. The Navy, of course, and a handful of people from the plant. Things never seen before are made in there because that's where Hellcat number one was born. The shift came out. And another one went in. And it changed again and again. They carried me in through that door on paper. They gave me size, a shape, a body. In almost no time, they began bringing me out, out in metal, piece by piece. And behind other doors, they put those pieces together, made an airplane. Then out I crept, new, untried. There I was, aluminum alloy. Aluminum alloy, 24ST, 24SO, 3S, one half hard and others too. Copper, brass, magnesium, stainless steel, chromoly, neoprene, plexiglass, plastics, fabric, phenol, and asbestos. There I was, Hellcat number one, and they were looking at me, looking with hope, but not indulgence. Hellcat number one, 11,000 pounds of me, ready to try my wings. And now today's the big day. That's why I'm excited. They're expecting great things of me. This is what they waited for, and so have I. I've been flying for a long time on paper, but this is the real thing. at last to prove that you are somebody. Down that runway is the road to your future. You wait for the word. Flight 4, this is Grumman Tower. You are cleared for takeoff.
200 feet in a minute. You can hear those future pilots say, you're for me, Hellcat. makes you feel good, but there isn't much chance to get your breath. You aren't earthbound anymore. No, sir, not you. Then you hear a voice. God bless Grumman. They've sure given us something that'll go upstairs faster. And you find those stairs are pretty high, some 40,000 feet. In fact, you learn that all the things they designed to put into you aren't just hopes and prayers anymore, they're facts. You know now you're the Hellcat the pilots have been waiting for. mind touching the earth again, because now you know what you can do. Suddenly you understand what this means. The name Grumman on a plane has the same meaning to the Navy that the word Sterling has on silver. You're proud of it, and so are they. You've proved yourself. You know you're all they ever hoped for. That was the end of chapter one, and just the beginning of a whole lot more. Now it's a different story. Now Hellcats come from hundreds of places, like Photo Template, for instance. There, the patterns for many pieces are drawn actual size on metal, like a blueprint. Then the camera's wheeled into place and the negative's made. There's got to be precision here. But these ships are made with exactness. They can't be a hair out in size. Next, the developed negative is put back in the camera and projected on a blank sheet of metal. Then Bill checks with the original. Okay, sharp and exact, and ready to become a master template. There are hundreds of these templates here already cut and mounted on the pattern for a different part. First, the plain flat sheets are cut into prearranged sizes. Some of the sheets go to Fred, who punches out diamond gussets. pieces come to Tony, who drills them. Or Morris or Bill, who do the same. But every hole is in the right place, because the templates guide them. In the router room, other parts are cut with speed and precision by men like John. Here are five pieces of skin cut at one time because of that master template that guides the cutting edge. After they're cut, the pieces are rough and have to be burned. They're getting ready here to put a little pressure on the ribs and formers. There's very little of the Hellcat that's flat, and this hydraulic press can turn out almost any shape because it has rubber above, and that's where the pressure comes from.
there they are, just that many more parts for the Hellcat. Some parts have to be soft and others hard, and that's what goes on in here. First, 920 degrees of sodium nitrate bath, then it's quenched. All this shoving around hasn't made the new parts any cleaner. So here is the beauty specialist, even if it's called degreasing. Trichloroethylene certainly does the job. And then there's anodizing. That puts a protective coating that prevents corrosion around salt water. Now they blast on paint for good measure. They go to a lot of trouble to make these parts last. Diamond gussets, filler neck caps and handles to control the cowl flaps and the oil cooler shutter. But it's not all aluminum and chrome. There's plexiglass. First it's heated to make it soft and then it can be pressed into almost any shape quickly. Running lights, the two of them molded as one. Then they're cut in two, and there they are, one for each wingtip. Of course, there's more plexiglass for the pilot's convenience and safety. There's copper, too. Each one of those lines is an important part. They're carefully bent to fit right. Eddie sets up a bunch of them together to be installed as an assembly. That saves a lot of awkward crawling around inside when they're installed. Other parts are also put together in groups to make sub-assemblies, like this gun charger panel or the filler neck box that Helen's making. engine cowling, landing gear struts. It takes expert production planning to see to it that there's just the right amount of everything to go together properly. lunch. 40 minutes of relaxation. But what's this? Well, it seems there's more to lunch than eating. Yes, a whole lot more. Hard play encourages hard work and helps to develop the keen Grumman spirit of competition.
fun at Brightwater, too. One of the several Grumman nurseries. Fun for these kids whose mothers work at Grumman. It makes a mother feel a whole lot better when she's working, if she knows her child is in safe hands. Back at the plant, there's been time for quite a little fun before the other lunch shift. As one shift relaxes, another carries on the important work of Grumman at war. And another Hellcat starts to grow. Not much of a start, to be sure, but those 40,000 parts begin to come together. Each one designed, numbered, fitted into its exact place. Each one is important. But now and then, there's one that has to be double-checked. The arresting hook, for instance. A pilot must know his arresting hook is going to hold when he comes in for a carrier landing. So there's a special department where endless checking and testing, accepting and rejecting goes on. Floyd can tell in a few seconds whether a recoil strut will hold. Part 24,402 is OK. Now the planes are growing in sections, whole flocks of them, all at the same time. Here the nerve center takes shape. As delicate and complicated a piece of mechanism as could be imagined. It's hard to say which valve is most important, but this one sure does a lot of vital jobs. It controls the landing gear, the wing lock, wing flaps, air cooler, intercooler, and gun charger. So Walter has quite a weight on his shoulders, and so has the valve, about 1,500 pounds. Leak? No, just a loose fitting. OK. For military aircraft, Grumman was first with retractable landing gear, and every one is still subject to the most rigid tests. Charlie and George keep an eye on the motors. There are 2,000, and it takes tough bolts to keep them from parting company with the rest of the ship. And rugged blades to deliver that bite in front. hundred of them, side by side. From other nearby Grumman plants come outer panels. Center sections headed for the hungry production line in plant number two. Part 24,002 is added, and another 4,000 expert jobs come together. For it's here that the varied skills of the entire Grumman organization join in a coordinated effort to build better planes faster. It's only eight or nine days from start to finish, and some 25,000 people have had a hand in the job. 25,000 Janes and Marys, Johns and Joes, with their hands and their skills, their will and their work, have made these Hellcats.
protection and camouflage as a final coat of paint. The wings come on at last. Part 25,923, the wing hinge bolt. That's another one of those parts that's double checked. 2,300 amps of magnetic current are shot through it to show up the slightest flaw and ready to carry the weight of a fighting Hellcat. So another one is set for the final test, the one in the air. Complete as it is, no ship can live without spare parts. This platform is the service lifeline, two million pounds a month. Some coming, but most of it going, going wherever Grumman Aircraft is doing a job. One day, the mailman brought a letter telling of another star to be awarded for service and achievement. There had been other stars, such as those awarded for the production of the famous TBF, The Avenger. These typical Grumman folding wings made baby flat tops practical. With wings folded like this, five airplanes can be stowed in the place of two. special star, the one rewarding the building of the Hellcat. Each new Hellcat must be test flown, and Grumman has a lot of skillful flyers for this job. So an okay from one of them means a ship's ready for the Navy. Then into the delivery line, it goes to await the daily arrival of the Navy pilots. Here they come. Each man is assigned one of the new ships. And the scooter speeds him out to his new charge. Grumman has delivered more fighters to the armed forces than any other single plant in the country.
tried and tested, fit as only a Hellcat is, and ready for their life over the sea. And now in many secret, faraway places, their real life begins. Hellcat Squadron's all-time record was 187 Japs without one loss. And of all Hellcats flown by the Navy, the official ratio over a four-month period was 31 to 1. safe and sound from the mission, and your thoughts sometime turn homeward. To those buildings at Bethpage, to those minds and hearts and hands that made you. You think back on all those people who were always with you, wherever you were, those people who gave you your being. And yes, you think back on experimental, those doors you came through not so long ago. And there she is, the Tiger Cat. A bigger and newer one of your breed. A new generation just born that day, and what a ship. Power to fly and fight like nothing else in the sky.
Yes, you know those people back there are keeping faith. Keeping faith not only with you, but with those fighting Navy pilots who depend on you every day for their very lives. For you know that the pilot never rides alone. <laughs>